Now we're going to talk about compute kernels. And compute kernels are how you specify the computations you're going to do in parallel in OpenCL. So an OpenCL kernel, this is the code you're going to execute, is the code that you execute in parallel, and it's basically just C99, so standard straight up C code. You can think of this as really the inner loop. So this is the code that you're going to execute thousands of times in parallel. We take a look at an example of a regular C function here. So here I've got a function called calculate sign, takes in some data, and it's going to iterate over that data. And for each version, each piece of the data, it's going to calculate the sign of that piece. Now, if we want to execute this in parallel, what we're going to want to do is we're going to do this part in parallel. So the parts where we calculate each of these signs, we're going to want to do a lot of those in parallel. So the OpenCL kernel for this is going to look at this. Here we define as a kernel, calculate sign. We're going to have our data coming in. And the first thing we do here is we get the global ID. So getting the global ID is basically saying, which thread am I? And then we use that global ID to figure out which computation I do. So this is taking this for loop, and we're saying, well, the hardware is going to do this for loop. It's going to run one thread for every item in this for loop. And so I'm going to tell it to you down here. I'm going to say, which item am I? And do the processing for that item. So question, what happens here if the data is 1,024 long, as it is here, but we use global dimensions that are only 512 long. What happens to the kernel? Well, in this case, we only process half the data. So if the global dimensions only go up to 512, that means we're only going to calculate sine for values from 0 up to 512. So half of the data won't be processed. All right, so OpenCL kernels, it's basic C99. So, and C is not a great programming language. It's not friendly for programmers, doesn't have a lot of powerful features, but they threw in a bunch of things. So vectors, this gives you great portability. If you write OpenCL code and you express it in vectors, it'll automatically compile for SIM decode on CPUs, SIM decode on, NVIDIA, on AMD GPUs, and regular scalar code on NVIDIA GPUs. So you get vectors that are portable. You get explicit ability to control rounding and conversions. So before this, doing rounding conversions efficiently was really hard. There's hardware to handle this, but with OpenCL, you get the ability to explicitly say you want to do that. And you get a lot of intrinsic functions. These are math library functions, but the nice thing about them is they come with guaranteed accuracy. So let's take a look at some of those. So here's some of the OpenCL intrinsics, and they're the sort of thing you'd expect, logs and sine and cosines and tangents and all that sort of thing, but there are a bunch of other things in there. And you should take a look at these because if you're doing something that's common, I don't know, doing a sum of absolute differences to try and find out the best point for a motion vector search, you might find that there are some functions in here which help you with that. And you can find all this information online in the OpenCL instruction manual. So OpenCL also provides faster intrinsics. So there are native versions. This is the fastest one, but has no guarantee of accuracy. So basically, the native ones could be random number generators, but generally they give you something like what you'd expect. So if you say native divide, you probably get something a little bit like a divide, but there's no guarantee of accuracy. And they have half versions. And the half versions are faster, but they have some guarantee on accuracy. It's just generally lower. So by having these different versions, you as the programmer can trade off precision and performance, and you can do it in a reasonably controlled manner. OpenCL also has a bunch of utility functions, and these utility functions give you information about each work item. We saw one of these already, get global ID. So this tells us the work item ID in a particular dimension. Here we are, get global ID zero, so the first dimension, tell me what the ID is. There are a bunch of other ones, get the work dimensions. What are the dimensions of the global dimensions? Get the size, what's the maximum number in a particular dimension? You can get local information, the number of groups, group IDs, etc. Lots of information about it. And this information is used so that you can write code that figures out which work, what, which, what each work item does. So it allows you to write more flexible kernels that can be clever about figuring out which work they should do. Now, the OpenCL intrinsics are actually really nice. And this was something that didn't exist before OpenCL came around. And they give you two things that are very important. Guaranteed availability. So anywhere you run OpenCL, you're guaranteed these library functions are there. And guaranteed precision. That means on any OpenCL certified device, you get the same accuracy from these library functions. And this enhances our ability to make portable and performant code because we can trade off precision and performance, we know what's available, and we know how well it works. 
So it's important to point out that the way they guarantee precision is they test for it when they grant OpenCL compliance. So this gives you this trade-off, as I said, in preferences and precision. Now, does this guaranteed precision of these library functions, does this guarantee the same results for your application on all OpenCL machines? The answer here is no. And it's no for two reasons. First, the library call will give you the same results. So if you call sign, you'll get the same accuracy. But the compiler can reorder operations. And as we all know, if you're writing parallel code, the order in which things happen in parallel code may change, and that may change your results. So this guaranteed precision is a really good thing to build your code on, but it doesn't guarantee that you're going to get deterministic execution on all devices.